Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen. So the winner of the recent vote is number four and this is just a quick recap on him so a lot of red, a lot of green. I'm going to try to keep this as the top. It seems to face a lot better in this direction. So what I mean by that is that the color play seems to be the most the strongest when it's facing up this way. From this end, these edges don't really flash out all that well. You can see that especially on this side. But from this side, it really does seem to face really well and it's the side where the red is most dominant. Though you can see it towards the bottom there, which is a bit unfortunate, but we're gonna see how it goes. I'll keep it wet just so that we can see that flash. Now, I am a little bit concerned that there's, it's starting to show some signs of crazing. If you can see that there, that's a little little line. It's definitely not a potch line. It is definitely a tiny crack. So we'll see how far that goes in. And since it's the winner of the vote, who knows? It'll probably be sandy all of a sudden right in the center. But we haven't had a lot of luck in our first vote winners. So we'll hope that this one does buck the trend. And that's just a little bit of a little bit of a crack down towards the bottom. The rest of it, the other sides look pretty good. So we're going to hope for the best. And I'll start off by taking off the top here. We'll leave the bottom alone for now and we'll just see what we've got. Houston, we have a problem. It's actually slightly easier to see when it's wet. There is a significant crack running down along here. I know the colour is absolutely beautiful and I'm sure we'll try to salvage something out of this. But I think the piece does have quite a bit of crazing. So there's this line here that we couldn't see before. There's the line we could see before. But now on this other side, you can see just under that crust there is more going along so and same color bars I took a little bit off the bottom we're just starting to hit color on that side as well but I just wanted to take a little bit off so I could dop it it's a fairly small stone and I'm sick, of tired, sick and tired of holding them without dopping them but this is a big one so it goes all the way through and I thought I'd do this on camera and see there we go bam and then this is a really quick and easy way to see if there's major issues inside the stone bloody pull the thing in half and you can see there it's uh, it's not great it's not looking great so it's going to be hard to get anything from this this little triangle piece looks like it'll actually be pretty half decent apart from that massive crack that it had it's actually fairly intact that's not a crack there that's just the edge where it cracked but this one here still has more issues. You can see there along the top, it's got a pretty significant crack just running through under there. The cr Yeah, it doesn't go right through to here, but there's still this line across here that looks like it's going to cause some issues. Uh, pretty deep inclusion just here as well. I'm going to have to get down closer to the color bar here. We're not quite on it yet. We're just a little bit off it, as you can see there. It's starting to flash through though, but I didn't want to do the ultra coarse diamond grit all the way down to the colour. You want to pull up a bit short, get rid of those last little spots with the finer grit. But this is what's annoying. So that crazing there, I'm going to have to cut all the way down into it and past it to try to hit this colour here and hope that the rest of that stone's okay. But any sign of crazing is a bad sign for the rest of the stone. You're going to really struggle to get anywhere. See, there's that line there, so it might have to come off as well, down towards the bottom. 
It's a bit crumbly. Ah, oh, well. All you can do is try. I reckon we'll still get a nice little triangle out of this piece. The rest of that is pretty much intact. But this one, we're going to have to see how it goes a little bit more. And just see what this line here does. I might have to cut from this side up until there as well. Which might lose us a bit of colour, though it's pretty potchy over there. And then we run into the problem of this one up the top. I'm going to have to cut through that and see what we've got left. Hopefully that middle area is still pretty good. But we're going to lose that green on top, probably. So, yeah. Let's aim for somewhere just there. In the red. Cue the sad music, we are not going to be successful in this one. Number 4 has turned out to be a bit of a dud. So the small triangle piece, that's still going to be usable, I'll get something out of that, it's pretty nice, needs a bit of tidying, those inclusions will work out. I actually think I might flip it and use this side as the face, it's a lot nicer. So the crazing, I can work that out over there. Having said that, I will mention, and we'll go into crazing a bit now since this is a great example, I will say that if a stone is crazed and you even get a nice small little chunk like this, I still wouldn't be confident in setting this in jewellery and selling it without holding onto it for a long time. Because the crazing is a sign of something that I'll get into, and even if you break apart the stone, there's a good chance that this piece will further craze in the coming weeks. I'll keep an eye on it. Now the bigger piece is, it's pretty shot, it's it's not great. So there's just too much crazing to get past, there's this here that go, takes out the entire bottom chunk, and the crazing is so uneven and all over the shop, there's this one here that goes all the way across the top. By the time I cut into them, it's, it's just going to be, it's going to be pretty garbage by the end of it. So I thought I'd just take this opportunity, because it's going to be a bit disappointing, Take this opportunity to just go into crazing a little bit because I'm sure people have seen it and a lot of people get it mixed up but with cracks and crazing. But they're two completely different things. So if I bring on this piece of potch, that is like... This is one of the worst cases of crazing I've ever seen and you can see it goes through the entire stone and it does just cause the stone to literally crumble apart. Now what happens with opal, because it's got such a high water content compared to a lot of other gemstones, I believe it's opal and amber that are particularly prone to crazing, and Australian opal is far less prone to it than others, because the water content is just a little bit lower in Australian opal than, say, Ethiopian or Indonesian opal. So it's a lot more stable and crazing's pretty, pretty rare, but you can treat an opal badly enough 
to cause crazing. So this one here is an example of a piece that has been crazed beyond belief. And all it is is an environmental condition that was pretty unfavorable for the poor little thing. And it's either just been heated up or cooled too rapidly. It's basically lost water. So humidity changes, really drastic humidity changes, such as leaving a piece of opal out in the sun, will cause it to dry out ridiculously to the point where, think of it a bit like a piece of plastic. You can get a little bit of flex out of it, or even just like a piece of wood like, well, this is cardboard-ish, a little bit of packaging that I had here. Like you can bend it, and it'll spring back into its normal position. So in a lot of sciences, we call that elastic kind of, an elastic response. But if you take it too far, that's never gonna spring back now, that's permanently deformed. And that's what's happened to the opal, except it's not a kind of physical movement, it's a humidity and water content. So it's dried too far, and it's not gonna spring back, even if the humidity balances itself back out. Which is why a lot of people call this sun crazing. If it's left out in the sun, you get that extreme UV response. It dries out the poor thing and it becomes crumble. Which is ironic because I did reply to someone's comment in the previous video for the vote saying everyone hates apple crumble. And that's literally what we've ended up with. So yeah, if it's, if it's too bad, even if it's just that small, tiny bit of crazing, the rest of the stone is possibly completely destroyed just because the entire opal has faced those conditions and it's just permanently deformed basically is what's happened. So it's it's quite a sad sad thing to see especially with a piece with this much color. Now what can be done? So a lot of people when they come across crazing is there is a treatment option and you can use Opticon and basically stabilize out the piece and then carry on your merry way but at that point it's a heavily treated opal and it's worth less than, I mean I would be uncomfortable charging someone, I don't know, more than 10%. I, w I just wouldn't sell it if it was crazed and treated with Opticon. But some people do and really it's the only option because this will never be strong enough now. I wouldn't have the confidence in it to be able to make a piece of jewellery or anything from it. It is essentially just a, just a specimen piece at this point. And, I don't know, if I polish this up, sure, you'd still have this crazing and it might fall apart one day, but if you're just keeping it as like a little bit of a specimen piece, a bit of a display, then there's no harm in that. So, yeah, even though this piece is nice, I might practice with these with a bit of wire wrapping or something, but they'll never, they'll never get anywhere at this point. These are just, these are just studs, which is very unfortunate. It's nowhere near as bad as this, and we didn't get as much of a warning. All we could see before we started the piece was this little crack, and it kind of looked like it could have been just a part of a fracture. But once you take off the top and you start seeing these ones here, and then we saw the one that went across here, and I got a clean snap out of that, it was it was pretty much all over at that point. So I carried on a little bit with the finer grit diamond, but yeah, I, these are just going to carry on throughout the piece and it's just going to flake apart. So yeah, very sad. Maybe these will just go into the bag of giveaway pieces and I might just polish it up just so that it's a nice little, nice little specimen piece with a lot of color but with some obvious crazing and I don't know, maybe someone would like to have that somewhere in their little goodies collection. But yeah, that's, that's crazing for you. It's um, it's not surprising because it was the vote winner and we've had sand, we've had a crack and now we've got crazing. So we've completed the completed the full circle. We'll probably go back to sand next time, but yeah. Looking at the results, the results of the vote, the second place choice was this one. So number three came in after that. Now number three is not crazed in any way. This is it dry and it's a really nice dark crystal. We'll see how it turns out. And yeah, I think this will be one of the next pieces I do. There might be something in between, but I think I might start working on this straight away now that this one's this other one's turned into a dud. And yeah, we should be able to hopefully get something out of this. I don't want to jinx myself, but I'm hopeful. So yeah, that's that's crazy. It's uh it's something to keep an eye out eye out for 
And it's also a prime example of why buying anything wet is kind of difficult. Like this one you can't really cover up even when you wet it. But in a lot of cases you can cover up a lot of the crazing with a bit of with a bit of wet, especially in a rough piece. Whereas this one's been ground back a little bit. So yeah, unfortunate, but we carry on. And this will probably be the next piece you see. So until then, I'll see you in the next one.